In this video, I'm gonna give you my list of five things that I don't like about the Ari Alexa Classic. Now I also have a video about five things that I love about the Alexa Classic, which I'll link down in the description below. And I wanna make it clear that I don't hate this camera. This is an absolutely fantastic camera. However, I just wanna make these two lists of things I love about it, things I don't like about it, to help you if you're in the market for one of these cameras, to learn some of the best things and some of the worst things about it, as well as just, you know, as an entertaining video if you're interested in watching these types of videos. I love watching five things I hate or five things I love about whatever product, so that's why I'm making this video. I love this camera. There are just some gripes that I have with it, and that's what this video is. All right, so the first thing that I don't like about the Alexa Classic is the media. So this camera uses S by S cards. And as you can see right here, they're definitely not something you see every day. So they're kind of uh, proprietary. A lot of Sony's older cameras uh, use these. And of course the Alexa Classic, and I know some other cameras do. However, they're pretty outdated nowadays and they have some issues. So first of all, because they were pretty popular, you know, back when this camera came out in like 2010, what was considered a large storage size back then Nowadays really is not at all. And so I think the maximum size you can get an S by S card in is either 128 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes. You can't get them in any other higher storage sizes than that, I don't believe. And so I personally have a 64 gigabyte one and this camera can't even record 4K, it can record 1080p and I can pretty much get about 20 minutes of record time with 64 gigabytes on a card. Um, so you, know, you can kind of do the math on that if you get the biggest one, which is either 128 or 256. I forgot which one it is. You really, no matter what, can't get a super large amount of record time. You know, like for example, with most other mirrorless cameras, you can get a one terabyte SD card nowadays, which will just pretty much be unlimited storage for, you know, a regular mirrorless camera. And again, they're a lot smaller. Um, they're a lot cheaper than these are nowadays and a lot easier to find, you know, you really can't buy these new. If you do, they're gonna be ridiculously priced. So pretty much the best option is to buy these used, which means they've already been used for probably 10 years. You know, you have to worry about them maybe being defective, you know, from being used for so long. Uh, they're pretty expensive. This one cost me about $150, I believe, for 64 gigabytes. So 150 bucks to get 20 minutes of record time out of the Alexa. I don't wanna rent it anymore with that. Uh, the media on this just isn't that fantastic anymore. And you know, I understand that when this was released, you know, it was probably fantastic. It was, you know, the best you could get, you know, that sort of thing. But nowadays, because this camera's getting older, the media's getting older as well. And it just isn't as good as it used to be, you know, in terms of storage size and speed and size and, you know, availability and all that sort of thing. All right, so next thing on the list, I'm just gonna show you as I talk about it, that is the startup time on this camera. So. Let's get this kind of in view here. I'm gonna hold the power button. There we go, so right now it's loading. This camera takes a long time to start up. Now, if you're recording a narrative film where, you know, for every shot, you're gonna set everything up, you know, you're gonna wait for everything to be ready before you start rolling and start, you know, recording your scene, that sort of thing, this won't be that big of an issue because you can just easily wait for it to start up. However, in most other circumstances, you know, especially run and gun filmmaking or like documentary filmmaking where you need to be ready to go at all times, this is definitely a little bit of an issue. It's up and running right now and I'm recording. So yeah, it's not, you know, it doesn't take 10 minutes to start up or anything like crazy. However, it can be an issue, you know, in some scenarios and some circumstances. It's something to know before you purchase this camera just in case it's gonna be an issue for you. But again, it's an old camera, you know, if it was brand new, yeah, you'd expect it to be faster and it would definitely be a much bigger issue, but this is over 12 years old now. So it's something that you can live with knowing that you bought a camera, you know, of that age. But again, something to know before you decide to purchase this camera. All right, next up, number three, this camera has a pretty big lack of mounting points on it. So of course you have the top handle here with a bunch of 3 8 mounts on it. And then of course you can get quarter 20 adapters for all these. However, besides that top handle right there, you know, if you have the top handle removed or, you know, if you just don't want to mount stuff in there because you have to hold it from all over here, uh, the only really other viable options you have are a 3 8 thread right here and then a 3 8 thread right there. Um, there's a bunch of way smaller, I think they're M8 threads or something like that. They're 
not the standard quarter inch or three eighth size that most accessories use. That lack of having the ability to mount magic arms and monitors and, you know, wireless video transmitters and anything else that you'd want to mount to this. Just the lack of mounting points on this camera is a little bit annoying for me personally. I really wish it would have been more like a Z cam, uh, which if you don't know what that is, it's another smaller cinema camera, but it has quarter inch mounts all over the place. You know, if the Alexa had quarter inch mounts over here, down here, you know, more three and quarter inch up top, um, you know, some back, just if it had them more spread out all over the camera, it would have been super nice just for the ability to mount accessories that you need to mount to it without having to just mount everything to this top handle or get a plate somewhere. That's just another gripe I have with this camera. Again, uh, this is a personal gripe. It could be an issue with you too or it could not be. So it's just something I wanted to mention. All right, next up, number four is the size and the weight of the Alexa Classic. So if you watched my last video, the things I love about this camera, the build quality was one of them. This thing is fully made out of metal. You know, it's really thick, dense metal. The camera is very heavy and built like a tank. However, that does bring some downsides in terms of the weight and the size of this camera. So let me just grab something to compare it to. This is the Canon EOS M. It's a small little mirrorless camera. If I just put that up right there, <laughs> you can see how small this is compared to the Alexa Classic. How big of a camera this is, you know, especially with the battery on there, the monitor on there. The Alexa Classic is an absolutely massive camera. Now, I think the body only weighs about 10 or 11 pounds. However, once you get all this other stuff on there, it can easily get close to 20 pounds, which when you're holding it out, you know, mostly supporting with one hand, using the other hand to focus and stuff like that. It is a very heavy camera and it really will wear out your arms if you don't have any other support to it, like a tripod or an easy rig, you know, something to kind of hold it from the top to get some of the weight off of it. This camera is very heavy and it will really wear out your arms a lot after a short amount of time of holding it. Now we're gonna move on to the fifth and last thing that I really don't like about this camera, and that is the audio inputs, or I guess I should say the lack of audio inputs on this camera. So this camera has one input right here. This is a five pin XLR input. That's the only form of audio input that this camera has. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, an XLR input, that's fine. However, this is a five pin XLR, which isn't a standard XLR. The standard XLR is a three pin. So if you want to use a standard XLR microphone, you need a five pin to three pin adapter, which is something else to add to this. However, another thing, this camera doesn't have phantom power, so you can't just plug a standard XLR mic into this and get audio out of it. You need something with phantom power to power the microphone, then convert it from three pin to five pin to go into this camera, and then you can get audio out of this. There's no three and a half millimeter mic input to just get scratch audio with like a Rode Wireless Go or Rode Video Micro. There's no phantom power, there's not a standard XLR input, and there's just one. So to get usable audio out of this camera, you need to have all these other accessories mounted to it just to get scratchy audio. And even then, I've heard the preamps on this camera aren't that fantastic, and you're better off just using an external audio recorder. There's no scratch audio, so all the footage that comes out of this is 100% silent no matter what, unless you do connect a mic to it. So then it'll be harder to line up your audio and post. Long story short, Audio in this camera is terrible. Um, something you're gonna have to work around if you do wanna buy this. Make sure you understand that that is a huge workaround with this. This is nothing like a standard mirrorless camera where you can just plug in your Rode Wireless Go, get decent quality audio, or if you have nothing plugged in, you can at least get scratch audio from it to help pair up with your external audio recorder, you know, match it up in post-production easily. But that is it for the list of five things that I don't like about the Alexa Classic. Like I said, go check out the five things I love about this camera as well. I'll link that down in the description, as well as go down to the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next video.